Yeah. To the Panthers? Yeah, let's do it. To the so one one just preface on this. The the projection machine hasn't added Mayfield. I mean, it, that'd be pretty damn impressive if in an hour they did. Um, they haven't added Mayfield yet. So where it says Sam Darnold, I know it's not Sam Darnold. It's assume that's Baker Mayfield. I do think Baker plays all you know the majority of games. I don't think they're going to be benching him after trading for him. They're going to see what they have. So this stat line that says Sam Darnold is really what I'm expecting for Baker Mayfield, which really isn't anything you should care that much about anyways. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Moving moving along. I know. Seriously. This is an average team uh, as far as like their play share, all that stuff. Yeah. plays you think they're going to get and they're, uh, you know, they're going to slightly more pass than run. And there's a lot of X factors on this team. Yeah. I would say starting with Christian McCaffrey and how healthy the guy is. Exactly. Um, and what what I found very interesting. So as you can see, I projected him out for 53% of the rushes, 16% of the targets. That's a little bit less than his career averages, but I, I wouldn't be shocked at all to see them scale his work back a little bit so that he's playing more. Um, and maybe he still just gets hurt. Who knows? In the last two years, he's burned me as the number one overall pick. And I'm going to have a very hard time going back to him um, this year. And what's going to help me, you know, it's, it's so hard to pass him up. But what's going to help me is I projected him out for 15 to 16 games. And he still finished at, like running back five or six. So it wasn't like he was like, you're going to blow the world off McCaffrey anymore. Like, I do think they're going to scale it back a bit and he's going to be solid. But there's still, even with Baker there, so many factors that are just so questionable about this team. Not and not even including his health. Just a, a bad, pretty bad overall team. No, they're going to be bad. They're going to be bad. Like Everybody's on, on Twitter today was like, Baker's here. Now it's McCaffrey RB1 season and it's DJ Moore will finally blow up. It's like, he's probably better than Darnold because that bar is so low, but I don't, I'm not sitting here like screaming hallelujah that Baker Mayfield's here. He hasn't you want to know, you want to know what this changes? What's Nothing. the change? Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Like I could not have been more underwhelmed by a trade announcement. I was like, I don't care. Shuffling exactly. deck chairs on the Titanic between two, I think fairly mediocre quarterbacks. It's not going to exactly. change anything. Like I, Baker Mayfield's not like this winner. No. I 100% agree. I 100% okay. agree. You know, it changed DJ Moore. I bumped him up from four touchdowns to five touchdowns. I, I bumped okay, his 10% fine. up from 57 to 59. Like, fine. Robbie Anderson went from a, a 50% catch rate to 56. Like, nothing fine. that big happened. Robbie Anderson was one who, like, again, regular season, you'll probably never know when you want to use him. But in, in that best ball format, like he probably will rack up about 800 yards this year. Probably rack You've up always just had like a little bit of a crush on Robbie Anderson. I always have. I've, I've, ever since he won me a title a few years ago, I, right. it wasn't, it was only two years ago where he was getting he peppered more than DJ Moore in this offense though. So like last year, Darnold and him, they've never clicked since they were the Jets, since they were with Panthers. Th those two have never had a good bond. And it showed last year. The year before, though, with Teddy Bridgewater, Anderson was their alpha. He was their target hog. So for a guy that goes last couple rounds as like a best ball stab, he'll he's going to get in your lineup at least three to four times, whereas when you're in those rounds, like it's very rare. You're not finding guys that typically will find your lineup that late. Um, So I, I don't mind Robbie Anderson as a late-round stab. The last late-round stab I want to highlight is Donta Foreman because that's why I have McCaffrey taking a little bit of a hit this year is I think Foreman gets work whether McCaffrey's healthy or not. Um, I think he's going to be that, that physical bruiser. That's why I have McCaffrey at only seven rushing touchdowns and Foreman at five. They're, they're nearly neck and neck there. So I think Foreman's going to do a lot of the short yardage cleanup, which does limit McCaffrey's ceiling just a little bit. And when you have that type of receiving workload, I, I don't think he's going to completely disappear. But I do project Foreman as well, like with a couple starts. So he, he's a capable receiver. We saw him fill in for Derrick Henry and average right around 18. You know, he had a stretch where he was like 16, 18. You know, he, he had a nice fantasy run there. I like Foreman. I think he is a good player. I've always kind of liked his bruising style. Um, and I think he'll be a nice compliment. And if, like it's happened in two straight years, McCaffrey does go down and, and specifically for an extended amount of time. I mean, you remember who was the running back two years ago? Do you remember who it was? McCaffrey's backup that had a nice uh, little run? Um, uh, absolutely, I do. Um, he had kind of like a generic name. Um, mm -hmm. God, what was it? Davis? That's the last name. Mike, Mike, Mike Davis. Davis. Exactly. Mike Davis. Good call. Well Thanks. done. Uh, Mike Davis, but he was a uh, like low end running back one for a good amount of time, right? You remember that? So yes, I do remember that. <laughs> I, I think Foreman's a better. But then he, he lost his job, like you know, immediately. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, he's, he, and he wasn't even that good. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is a, a heavy volume to the running back offense. So if McCaffrey misses time, he probably will miss at least a couple games. I do oh, think Foreman is going to be very viable. So I, I am taking Foreman as a, a last couple round running back in a lot of these best ball drafts. I think he could uh, – he's one of my favorite handcuffs. I think he had a lot of upside if something happens to McCaffrey, and it probably will based on these last couple of years. Fair enough. There's literally nothing else to say about the Panthers. Although I will say you have McCaffrey as your running back three on the big board, but only projected as your running back seven. Yeah. All right. So there, yeah. So there you go. I guess that's similar to the ones – who were we just talking about? The uh, – you know, Mahomes. Well, there's the guys that you just like. You know, right. there's the, there's the Stefan Diggs guys that you just like. There's uh, Kamara. Yeah. There's Diggs, Pat. Yeah. There's Pat Mahomes. There's uh, you know, there's just guys that you like. Uh, there's Jameis Winston for right. who we talked about before, who you've got projected as your QB 25, but you got him as your QB 18 because you love Jameis. Debo so Samuel. <laughs> De- Debo Samuel. I projected 14. You got him at nine. You love and- Debo. This could make some people just turn this off, like depending on how analytical you are. But I think there's some pretty decent value oh, no. to people like, that have been here for an hour and twenty minutes aren't turning it off. No, and yeah, if you, if you're new, <laughs> please give us a thumbs up. But if you, if, there's some value in my opinion to drafting people you just want to root for too, oh, like I, as human beings. A huge part of it, and a huge part I, of it. I, if you know, so many years, like I'll never draft Peyton Manning because I don't want to root for him. Like I, I've gotten away from that because like. At the end of the day, I do want to win my league, and like I can't just like cross people off because I don't like them. But I also will bump people up a little bit more if I like them more. Like that's a deciding factor. And I have these guys just about equally statted out. I'm, I'm gonna bump up the guy I just like and want to root yeah. for. You know, like because right. I want him on my team. No, I mean shit. That's why I hate Kirk Cousins, and that's why I'm, I don't believe in him ever because I think he's the biggest <laughs> douchebag in the world. Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Very true. But again, if you guys are still sitting here, please you know, let us know you're here. Comment on in, say hello, because uh, this is an absolute marathon and I love it. But uh, just let us know you're still with us. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.